Hello and welcome to another lesson about language development. In this lesson, we are going to talk about children's understanding of morphology, how we study children's understanding of morphology and how it builds up over time. It's been a while, but a while ago we had a lesson where we talked about children's really early syntactic development. And we talked about how children who are about two years old can sometimes put together multi-word sentences, um, but that these sentences are telegraphic speech, right? So sentences like mama kick ball hard, they convey meaning, they have some syntactic rules going on, but they don't have all the stuff that you need to have like an adult sounding sentence, right? So an adult sounding sentence would be mama is kicking the ball hard and, and this contains various functional morphemes um, that are necessary uh, to the structure of the sentence. And some of these are words, some of them are morphology. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the morphology and um, the sort of basic functional morphology, at least, is usually in place by around three years old. So this happens during your second year for the most part. Um, some of this will continue happening throughout your life um, and especially during your early childhood, but the sort of most basic stuff gets pretty well in place by, uh, by year three. If a child is going to learn uh, basic morphology, they have to learn what are called morphological rules. And we'll talk as we go on about ways that you can learn morphology without learning rules. Um, but we're going to start off by talking about morphological rules, which you know as an adult speaker of the language, but which a little child wouldn't necessarily know. An example in English of a morphological rule that we all know is how to make plural forms of, of words. So for example, we have, when we talk about one cow, we take the, we, this is a singular, right? So one tells us that we're talking about something singular and cow is our singular form of the word cow. Um, when we talk about two cows, we have a suffix on there um, that will change our form into plural. So we have two forms of the word cow. We have a singular form and we have a plural form. Um, and so the first morphological rule that we have to know is that you take the root of a word, cow, and you add a plural suffix to it, and that gets you a plural word, right? So that in and of itself is a morphological rule that you have to make a plural form and that you do it by adding a suffix. So that's the first morphological rule that we have to know. We're gonna put that up there in our sort of morphological rule bank um, having to do with um, how we make plurals. Now, deeper than that, we have rules for how to make the plural be pronounced the right way. So plural, we have sort of left unspecified. It's spelled with an S, um, but it's pronounced differently on different words. So on the word cows, the, the suffix, the plural suffix is pronounced as a Z sound, right? It's a Z sound, but that's not true of every word that we use this sort of pluralization pattern on, right? So some, um, if we look at one rat, where we have two, two singulars and we make a plural, two rats, right? We have, that is not a Z. We don't say rats, right? We instead um, have an S sound. So rats, it's a, it's a voiceless sound. So we have two different possible sounds that we can make um, uh, be plural sounds. Now there's even another one that we commonly use in this, which is um, one piece. Uh, and two pieces, right? So that sounds initially just like it's it's a Z, but it's actually is. You actually, you, you've actually added a vowel in there too. So we now have three possibilities. You can either say Z, which would sound like pieces, right? Pieces, right? Which we don't do. We, we actually say piece is, right? Um, we can have S, which would sound like piece, right? Which we don't do. And we have pieces which is how we actually say um, the plural of pieces. So these are the three possible ways that we can pronounce this. And we have to learn how to say not, how to, not only that you form the plural by putting this sort of S-E-Z suffix onto, onto the root, but also how which, which S-E-Z suffix you put on that root. Um, and as it turns out, we have plural, which we talked about in one of the first lessons in this series. Um, we talked about how the is comes after alveolar fricatives. So piece ends in an alveolar fricative, and so we have to have um, is um, be our suffix there. Um, the, the S, the voiceless S, comes after voiceless sounds. So rat ends with a T, and that's voiceless sounds, so we use a voiceless suffix. 
and the Z occurs everywhere else. So this is the rule that you, you form for, uh, for deciding the way that you pronounce your plural suffix. Um, so these are two work rules that you have to know to create regular plurals in English. These are sort of predictable, normal plurals. There are some plurals that don't work this way, um, but this is how you form regular plurals in English. You have to know that you form a plural by taking a root and sticking a suffix on it. And then you also have to know how to decide how that suffix is pronounced. Um, so what you want to know is how does a child, when does a child know these rules, right? And the first way that you might think of that you could decide whether that child knows that rule or not is to just listen to the child speak. If the child's doing it right, then they probably know that rule, right? Um, and that's a reasonable assumption to make at the first level, but it's not actually going to tell you whether or not the child is following the rule. So let's so option one is just to observe the child's production. Just see if the child is using it correctly. If they're not saying pieces to say pieces, if they're not saying piece to say pieces, right, then they've probably learned the rule. Um, but this has one big problem, um, which is that you can't distinguish just in regular speech whether a child knows the rule um, uh, or has just memorized the plural form. So what do I mean by this? I mean that you could just memorize that rat is pluralized into rats and that cow is pluralized into cows and that piece is pluralized into pieces without ever having to learn a rule. You just, you know, you've learned that there are some cases where you need to use a singular and a plural, but you haven't learned what connects the singular form to the plural form. They just are randomly memorized and you can't tell if a child is speaking whether they have it memorized or whether they have the rule. So a child who's memorized forms will produce the right form, um, but they still don't know the, the rule for creating new word forms. So how do we tell if a child has a new word, is, is, a, is capable of creating new word, word forms? Um, we do this with a, um, a sort of a test that we call a WUG test. Um, and this is called the WUG test because of a famous example of a test like this um, that was done using the, the fake word WUG. So what is a WUG test? In a WUG test, um, you are re we rely on the assumption that if you know a rule, you can apply it to words that you've never heard before. You can apply that rule to words um, that somebody has just invented just for the purpose of this test. So how do we do a WUG test? We give somebody a picture. And we say, this is a wug. That's a wug right there. Um, and then we give them a picture of two of them. And we say, now there are two. There are two. And then you ask them to name that word. And if they say wugs with a Z sound, um, then they have learned the English pluralization rule. They have not just memorized singular and plural forms. They've actually learned a rule that connects um, wug, the pronunciation of the singular, to the pronunciation of the plural. Since they've never heard that plural before, they can't have memorized it, they have to know the rule. Um, and we can test this with other forms as well, right? So we can test this to see if they know the rest of the rule as well, um, or if they're just using z as their, their first guess, right? So we can give them another thing and say, that, here's another little guy, right? Um, this guy is a Rick. Um, and now there are two of them. There are two Ricks. And if you don't say Rick, z, right, and you give them the ricks with, with an S, um, then you have successfully learned your plural. Yeah. Um, and we can even do it with the last case, right, which is um, a mez, right, here's a mez. Um, now there's two of them, there are two mezes, right, and so you've learned this is form, right. Um, so this is how you do a WUG test. You give a fake word as the root, and you see if they can derive the plural form from that root. So what do we know about how children go about actually learning morphological rules? Now, in this lesson, we're not going to talk about um, when they learn pluralization and when they learn ING forms and things like that. We're just going to talk generally about how children go about you know, learning morphology. Um, and what we do know is that usually when children first start learning word forms, they just memorize them. So rather than learning the rule that goes along with them, they memorize mouse pluralizes into mice, deer pluralizes into deer, um, goose pluralizes into geese, rat pluralizes into rats, cow pluralizes into cows, piece pluralizes into pieces. 
Um, and to children who have just memorized the rules, um, they might sound perfectly good when they're but they can't pass a WUG test. They won't be able to pluralize a word that they've never heard before because it's just memorized. They've just memorized mouse and mice correspond to each other. Right? They can't apply that rule to things that they've never heard before. But eventually kids will start to notice that some of the words that they're learning have a pattern and they'll recognize that pattern and start applying that pattern to new words. If kids come to this realization, they can pass a WUG test, right? So once they've realized, oh, this is how we do it for most of our words, um, then they will be able to guess that if you give them a new word, um, they'll be able to guess how to do it. Now, what this means for as they acquire new words is that they are immediately going to be able to form a guess about the plural form of that word, and it might be wrong. So children at this stage um, end up overextending um, the, the plurals that they, this plural rules that they know to new words that they learn. So you might teach a child the word knife, right? And they will immediately talk about how they have lots of knives, right? Even though that's not the English plural for, for, for knife, which is knives, right? So um, knife is, is um, is an irregular form, but they will immediately assume that it's going to be regular and say nice. Um, foot, they'll say foots. Um, moose, they'll say mooses, right? So this is extending the rules that they know. These are correct rules. They just don't know that they don't apply to every word yet. And actually, sometimes children will become so excited with their new rule that they've come up with that they'll second guess them on things that they already have learned correctly. So if a child has already learned that mouse corresponds to mice and deer corresponds to deer and goose corresponds to geese, and then all of a sudden they learn this rule that works for many of the words that they've learned, um, they will forget about those old things that they learned and start saying mouses when they used to say mice, or they, they'll start saying deers when they used to say deer, or they'll start saying gooses when they used to say geese, right? Um, and so this is a sort of a funky phase where, where children actually may sound like they've forgotten something that they used to know, but really what it is is that they're they're second guessing themselves. They're like, I'm not sure I've learned that correctly because that doesn't match the pattern that I've learned. And they'll very swiftly um, come back around and remember those forms. But there is this sort of funny phase where overextensions can even apply to things that they've already learned before because they're so excited about this new generalization they've come up with that they'll start actually making errors that they weren't making before. Um, but most overextensions tend to resolve by age five, right? Um, children will still overextend new things that they learn, um, but for the for the things that they they really know the words, they'll they'll start resolving most of those overextensions by age five or often even earlier. Um, so mouse becomes mice again, deer becomes deer again, goose becomes geese again. Um, these things uh, children will relearn and and fix, um, and they'll also learn you know, new plurals that they don't know, didn't know before, so knife becomes knives, foot becomes feet, moose becomes moose, right? Um, so this is how morphological learning tends to progress. Um, there's this sort of important point at which a child learns not just to memorize two forms that map together, but to actually figure out how those two forms map together and to create a rule. And at that point, that rule gets overextended, um, and starts to be extended to new rule, new words, which means that a child can pass a WUG test. Um, they've learned a rule um, that is a first guess rule for how you form the plural. Um, and then gradually those overextensions get resolved and children learn irregular forms that don't follow that rule.